Hi guys, Elise again with another book rec slash craft video. I promised I would mix it up, but once again I'm doing another contemporary romance because I've been reading a lot of them because I love a happily ever after and I need a happily ever after right now, but I swear to god I'll mix it up some other time. So today we are doing Love Lettering, which is by Kate Claiborne. It came out in January and it's very cute. So not to give too much away, but it's about Kate, Meg, who is a hand lettering artist in Brooklyn and one of her works grabs the attention of this man named Reed because he found a secret message in it. <gasps> it's a scandal. Um, but anyways, it's a very cute book. It's, uh, it has friendship, it has finding yourself, it has found family, it has a lot of cute artwork and stationery that I really wish was real because I miss TJ Maxx and if Meg had a real shop and if she was real I would buy all of her stuff because it sounds delightful. Um, but most importantly, because I watch a lot of movies almost as much as I read, it really reminded me of the movie You've Got Mail, which if you haven't watched it, go watch it, please. It's delightful. It's the perfect movie to watch right now in that it is a love letter to New York. Besides the characters who are delightful, this book is just as much about being out and about and exploring and loving New York City, which when I read it, I really wanted to book another trip. And now I'm stuck inside and I really do want to walk around New York City, but we can't right now. So with that in mind, with signs in mind, with you've got mail in mind, here's our craft for today. So uh, one part of the book that isn't a spoiler is Meg and Reed are trying to find inspiration in New York. And they go for a kind of a scavenger hunt where they're trying to find hand-painted signs around the city. And I kind of made that my inspiration. So I would like to hand letter like Meg. I would love to find a tutorial. I'm not an expert. I'm not the one to provide a tutorial for that. You can find them online. I can provide some links if you would like. But that's not who I am. So I'm going off of the hand painted sign idea. So I figured you could create your own hand painted sign, either to decorate your house or just for something to do, and to provide a secret message. So maybe make a scavenger hunt for someone else. So. If you've got mail in mind, I also had my sign, The Shop Around the Corner. Because if you haven't watched it, that is the name of Meg Ryan's bookshop in the movie. It's also the name of the movie from the 40s with Jimmy Stewart that you've got mail based on. And you should watch that too, but I'm not going into it. But here it is. And I'm going to show you how to make it. All right, here we go. So for this craft, you're going to need some cardboard. I also used some paint, some paint brushes to brush on the paint, um, a pencil to sketch out my letters, and if you want to give your sign a more rustic feel, you can use some sandpaper to scrub down the paint, and if you don't have paint, you can use Sharpies, you can use chalk, you can use whatever you want, and if you want to change the shape of your sign, of your cardboard, use a box cutter to cut it to whatever shape you want. The first step is to color the base coat of your sign. I'm going to use a lighter color so that the words uh, on it pop when you're done. And you're just going to color that. If you want to change the shape of, your, shape of your sign, do that before you paint it. And also just a note, if you want it to look more rustic, if you want it to look more like wood, if you see those lines on the cardboard, the natural um, shape of a cardboard, don't color those in all the way. It'll make it look more authentic. And then once you're done with the base coat, you are going to trace on your sign your words. I practiced a lot beforehand on paper, so feel free to do that. Once and the tracing once is done, mine looks something done like done this. I can still play around with it. I can you erase can it because it's in pencil, so that's but that's a good guideline. It's a good spatial to awareness do. to know when I start painting. Good idea is to... Oh, you do. All right, so now I'm painting in my sign. I'm not going to give you a ton of advice on how to do that because I'm not Bob Ross and he could clearly do it better than I could. But just a pro tip, um, I'm a lefty so I make sure to do it in the opposite direction from right to left so that my hand is not being stuck in wet paint. Also just a reminder not to forget about your secret message if you're doing this secret message aspect of your sign or if you're just painting just to paint. Have at it. But some of the ways that there are secret messages in the book um, sometimes what Meg will do is the letters will be slightly below the baseline of other letters. They could be tilted at an angle. If there's a design element incorporated into the lettering, 
certain letters to spell out a message can have that design element. I'm not gonna have to tell you. I'm not going to tell you how I'm doing mine. So you're just going to have to figure that out and get creative. All right, guys, that was a pretty simple and quick tutorial because I want to encourage you all to go out and about and on Google or even around your house. I have some more time in my house to find your own inspiration, to find your own lettering ideas. My main advice is practice, practice, practice with on paper, with pencil before you do it on your sign. Um, also, if you don't have paint because not everyone has a ton of craft supplies in their house, do Sharpies, do crayon, do sidewalk chalk, whatever you have. It's just fun painting. So I'm going to leave you to that and I will show you the sign one more time and see if you can find my hidden message. And here the sign is one more time. Uh, happy crafting and good luck finding a hidden message. Goodbye, guys.